the first thing I, I wanted to say is uh, a few weeks ago, and actually uh, Alexander uh, participated in this as well, uh, we had the, on, um, uh, the, the uh, Open Power Summit Europe, uh, and there were some 50 talks there or so, and I'm very happy that there were almost 20 uh, that were FPGA related. So if you go to this, uh, if you look for the for the uh, Open Power Summit uh, Europe, you know, if you Google that, you will see find this, and, and all the all the slide decks are uh, are there, you know, including yes, I can, the, the I snap, can show uh, this yeah. examples so, so, here on so, my computer. So there's a you know a, a ton of material uh, available. It's growing. It's it's growing very fast. I was mm. I was very happy yes, with from one year to another with the turnout. Videos are going up next couple of weeks. Ah, great! Yes, because I I, 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 I want to write a, a blog, but I want to do that Finally. When, the, when the videos are up, so that I send it out, you know, to the FPGA mailing list and things like that once. Um, so um, again, Alexander already mentioned, right? With Power Eight, we had Capi 1.0. With Power Nine, we have uh, Capi 2.0 and Open Capi. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about what's uh, coming as well. You know, we have a, a roadmap uh, that, that continues. Um, so uh, with the, uh, the the Power Nines that uh, that uh, Nimbix uh, also has. So, so the demo was on a Power Eight, yes. but but on a on a Power Nine you can also uh, use the FPGAs. Um, so so here actually, and I'll show that a bit more on the next picture. Uh, you can connect it two ways. You know, in either case, we tend to put it in a PCI slot, so it gets it at least its power there. In the case of Capi 2.0, it also gets its protocol on top of the PCI. Uh, and if you're running Open Capi, then we run a cable, and I'll show you a little bit more. So what we're doing in that case is that we are so these these as you saw in the previous presentation, the Power 9 CPUs actually have six of these by eight links coming out. Uh, all six are usable as an MV link uh, in the, in the, uh, the supercomputers at uh, some of them, Sierra, for example. And four of the six are usable as open cap. So if you want to talk to an FPGA, uh, you know, we, we actually need to, to use a little, there's a, there's a little adapter card uh, if you want to use uh, an, an, uh, an AC922 AC that goes into the same socket that we would otherwise put a GPU in. We run a little cable off to the FPGA. Uh, this is the KU3 that I think you were just uh, using. Really? Yes. Um, and uh, and then uh, you know one card that is just being announced and starting to ship uh, this quarter is a is a is also a, a half height half length card, so it would fit in the uh, AC 922. Uh, this this is a, one of these multi chip uh, FPGAs. It has two of the HPM memories on there, the same kind of memory that you find inside a, a GPU, uh, and it has about a, a one million uh, lot slice of, uh, of, of FPGA there as well. And what you see here is one of these open copy connectors. Right? So um, uh, very soon we'd be able to, to plug a card into a Power9 system uh, and, and play with open copy and FPGAs that have these HBMs, which uh, opens uh, some new doors. And you know, as Alexander already mentioned, right? If you're interested in this framework with uh, with Snap, uh, that that will carry forward. Uh, there is another system that I, I want to to highlight here, and there's of course uh, tons of systems, and you can see a whole bunch of them, you know, in the various groups at uh, <coughs> supercomputing. This is one that was done by uh, by Wistron. It's called Mihawk, and. Uh, I think you will like this one because it has a full complement of uh, PCI uh, Gen 4. It actually brings out, um, you know, uh, all uh, some, some, some 80 lanes of, uh, of, of, of PCI Gen 4. And it also supports, you know, up to 32 DIMMs. And one thing that's kind of uh, interesting here is, uh, you know, in this case, it brings out two of the four uh, open copy links per socket. Uh, so not all four of them, but it has it has two of them, uh, and but it, you don't need a, a, a little adapter card or something. You can actually cable directly out from these uh, to, uh, to to an FPGA card. So one of the things that you could do with this card, with this box, is here is the kind of the big brother of that uh, uh, VU33P that I I just showed. 
Uh, so this is a, a, a card also from Alfredo, but it's a full size, you know, like the big uh, GPU cards, and therefore wouldn't fit directly into an AC922. Um, but that, that one has an FPGA with also the two HBM, uh, but, but, but uh, three uh, sort of logic slices of FPGA there as well. So it's a kind of like a five chip, uh, multi chip silicon on silicon module, and that adds up to three million watts. So this is, a, is quite, a, quite, a, quite a beast. And it has a ton of I.O. Uh, as well, you know, including uh, what you could configure as for one, 100 uh, gigabit Ethernet uh, ports. So um, just a little bit more, you know, if you would look at the, 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 at the, the picture of that, it actually, like I mentioned those three slices of logic, the high bandwidth memory. That high bandwidth memory uh, actually gets exposed inside the FPGA as uh, 32 AXI channels. So, so you know, you're, you're not going to, I mean, it's 400, I think it's 430 or 460 gigabytes per second of, of bandwidth, you know, to, to, to that memory. So that's a lot to chew on from a single engine. You get ridiculously wide buses. So what they did is actually they broke it up. So the vertex is from Xilinx, right? So hmm. the FPGA IP codes are Xilinx, right? This is, this is Xilinx stuff, yeah. 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 Xilinx uh, 37 uh, and and the, yeah, the IP cores for this are also coming from science. Yeah, yeah you, you, I mean, you, I guess you, you could theoretically do something else. I don't know if they enable you to do that, but I wouldn't. I, I would be a real challenge to chew on more than 400 gigabytes. But that would be hidden under the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So, one other thing I might add is yeah. another round members will have a low cost single socket um, open cap cable. Another vendor. Mm. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. There's nice. Yeah, because the it's still it's still rumored, but there's still rumored. I see. I see. Because because because, because, because unfortunately, right now, yes, the cheapest systems and this one you can get for like two and a half thousand yeah. dollars, right? Um, th those unfortunately don't have open cap. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Be a similar <laughs> one to the open cap. All right. I would. I, I look forward to that. And I think there are some universities that uh, will take on up on that. But they have a you know they have a great way to get started. Uh, so, so if you, if you use that system and you stuck the the Mihawk system and you stuck two of those FPGA cards in there, here's an example of something what you could build. You know, you would have two to four terabytes of, of memory uh, with uh, you know 170 uh, gigabyte per second each, a little bit less if you put all 32 DIMMs in there. Um, you know, an an, an open a copy, two two open copy lanes is 50 gigabytes per second or 400 gigabits per second. You know, you also saw 400 gigabit Ethernet ports coming out. And actually, if, if the riser card didn't, unfortunately, the riser card has the by 16 Gen 4 <laughs> in, in the middle of the three slots. So if you stick a double white card in there, even if you only want power out of that, you're going to cover that one by 16 slot. So, but still, you have enough left to get uh, 300 gigabits, you know, out on, on either side. And if you build a different riser card, you get that, get you know, 400 gigabit per second in, you know, go through all of this, go, and, and all together you can go, uh, you know, 100 gigabyte per second. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and, and, and actually that, that card, it had, it had, I don't know if you saw it, it has these uh, Firefly connectors or something, because actually you can get another, uh, you know, another 800 gig you know, links out, out of that thing. So, or just that one FPGA, you can have uh, uh, 12, um, 1200 uh, gigabit uh, um, And then, uh, I, you know, now, now, now at this point you may say, oh, well, you know, that, that Mihawk system is actually doing a bit better than, a, than an AC922 with FPGAs. Well, okay. here's something that we don't have, but, but uh, and um, Nalatec uh, has, has worked on, uh, some of you might, might know uh, Alan Cantle, so this is, uh, this is his baby. So he's proposed uh, building a module uh, that would actually fit, fit right, right inside the, the, the socket. It's, it's, it looks a lot like that uh, 9H7 card from, from Alpha Data, uh, so it has the, the same pu 37 p FPGA, uh, and it would, in addition to, to the connections the open copy connections through the board, uh, it would have a, a number of uh, by eight uh, connections and a, and a bunch of by fours. This is sort of the equivalent of those 100 gigabit uh, links. 
what you could build with that is this this is really you know this 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 is pretty spectacular right so if if you would if you would put four FPGAs you know in each of the four uh, sockets for the, for the GPUs that have the uh, the open cathy links you know you could bring out those four times 100 gigabits per second out of each of the FPGAs so that you give you a box you know with 1600 gigabit ports and 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 remember each of these each of these four FPGAs also had uh, four of those by eight connections. So there's enough there to do a, a you know a fully uh, fully crossbar kind of thing. So you know one of the things that that could give you you know after a whole bunch of FPGA FPGA programming, you know this SMP link wasn't wasn't the strongest part, right? Uh, as we heard earlier. Well, this thing you can you know you can fully interconnect that way <laughs> uh, as well. Now, now this is not, um, you, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm very excited. I hope it gets built. But I, we look, we look at it as a, as a, as a research project. This is not necessarily something that, that we think is a, is a, is a commercial thing. There's a, there's a lot to do with it. But it is certainly an, an incredibly uh, interesting uh, platform for, uh, for, 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 for exploration. Um, and, and you know that's kind of an equivalent picture that corresponds to that, right? So this this end of it looks pretty similar, and then uh, you know that end kind of uh, doubles up because you have four open cathy links and you know essentially two, you know twice as many of those. Uh, so you know what could you do with this? Well, um, you could exper experiment with new uh, hardware architectures. Uh, in uh, Delft, uh, where, where I'm spending part of my time, uh, we've been looking at in-memory databases. Right for a while, uh, FPGAs, uh, you know, were, were actually useful to take data from hard drives and you know filter it or, or do decompression on it and, and get the best out of the bandwidth of the hard drives that were the limiting factor in databases. With in-memory databases, you know, the kind of acceleration kind of fell out of vogue. Uh, but we now have enough bandwidth. We can bring all the bandwidth to, to the accelerator again, all the memory class bandwidth. So now we're looking at an FPGA IP that can keep, keep up with that for things like decompression, sort, joint closer, etc. Uh, FFTs have been a mainstay for uh, uh, for FPGAs. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of work on graph, uh, signal aggregation stuff. Actually, uh, uh, CERN gave a, gave a talk at the uh, Open Power Summit Europe. Uh, about you know not not with this card but with their own card in a in a Mihawk system uh, they could take all the signals from from their experiments uh, and and uh, you know their particle detectors and so on and, and do good, uh, good filtering work and and you know they're they're at least intrigued by uh, by, by, by stuff like this you know for possible next generation of that uh, network filtering you know network filtering is something that often involves things like re regular expressions. Regular expressions is one of those things that FPGAs are just really good at. So there's a bunch of different things one could do. Um, I'm not going to go into detail with this. Uh, this is one of the things we did at Delft, uh, you know, for a, a snappy decompressor. In the case of databases, you usually have <coughs> your data sitting in uh, parquet files uh, or ORC files. They're compressed files, so one of the first things you want to do is take these files, decompress them, stick it in memory. In this particular case, we actually, you know, built um, a little engine around each block of the VRAM that we use, so we can get a higher degree of parallelism and indeed drive things up to those kinds of bandwidths that you've seen. In the and then the last thing I want to talk about a little bit is uh, so so you've seen kind of up to uh, up up to snap. And uh, you know, being able to to program with actions, um, you know, here's some some work out of Delft that actually builds on top of all of this. So it builds on top of Power and Cappy and uh, the, the uh, and, and Snap, and it, it, and it looks at uh, transformations of uh, uh, data structures in memory that are uh, there according to the uh, Apache Arrow uh, in memory standard. Right, so now, now that in-memory computing is such a ubiquitous thing, um, it's helpful to have 
uh, standard exchange formats, just like it is helpful to have standard exchange formats in files. And what it, what it does is that if you go from, say, a Python framework and you have a C acceleration library or something like that, you don't have to serialize and deserialize to get the data structures from that one framework into the other framework because there's a standard way that these things look like in memory. Well, what that also does is that now accelerators can get at this, at least accelerators that share memory, you know, can get at these data structures without having to do those serialization, deserialization steps. And in, in big data type applications, that serialization, deserialization quite often can defeat the purpose of having an accelerator in the first place. So NVIDIA a few weeks ago uh, announced their RAPIDS framework, which leverages uh, Apache, Apache Arrow. This work out of Delft, what it does is if you have a schema for, for one of these uh, <coughs> Apache Arrow data structure, it will automatically ge generate the, uh, the, uh, the interface circuitry, the interface circuitry in, in the FPGA, you know, again, sitting on top of the, of the, the SNAP uh, framework, uh, to, to, you know, so that in your application you don't actually have to uh, refer to, to things like columns and, and, and uh, particular elements of your Apache Arrow data <coughs> structure with, an, with a virtual address. It actually goes one up on that. You can just refer to them uh, you know, as streams or by index or whatever. So the level of abstraction goes even you know, one, one level uh, higher. And the only thing that, you, that is left for you to build you know, is, the, is again the little engine that uh, you know tra transforms from lowercase to uppercase or sorts or whatever it is that you want to do. And we already have had uh, a number of master students uh, that uh, that in a very short amount of time are, are able to do things uh, like uh, you, you know uh, build 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 uh, actual applications that, that that work on top of these uh, Apache Arrow tables because there is so so little FPGA program really need to do. And what is interesting is that, uh, um, you know, with a, a, a by 8 Capi 2.0, which, you know, would peak out around, the, I think you said 14 gigabytes per second, we've demonstrated uh, 12 gigabytes per second going through this entire stack. So, you know, of course, you know, when you, when you, when you raise the level of abstraction, there's always the risk that you, that you get throwing performance away. You know, what we've, we've been showing that is that we can Raise the level of abstraction, but still, you know, ma maintain our, our, our bandwidth through uh, through all of that. So that that to me is very uh, very encouraging. You know, I do hope that one day we'll, we might get to, to something like like OpenMP, which now you know we have with the with the GPUs. It'd be, you know, I, I'm I'm beginning to believe that, that maybe we can get there with FPGAs too. Uh, it's still a, a, you know. Uh, this is this is a still a, a, a step short of that. <laughs> Uh, but, it, but it makes it one, one heck of a lot easier. Uh, oh, and one thing. So, so this, I, I have to say this was on the previous iteration of uh, uh, MRC 2 f one So the same framework you can do over there. Uh, there, of course, it's, it's PCI-based, so you're in for the, the extra copy, you know, into the device memory. Um, and, and for the, the uh, application example that they, they had there, uh, on on uh, a system like the, the one here at Nimbix, uh, the, the performance was uh, considerably higher, uh, basically because you, you have to do only half as many uh, memory moves. Uh, and, and, and it's all open source. Uh, so, uh, So, to the, so the point of all of this was, uh, you know, if, 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 you're, if you're investing in, in that uh, SNAP framework, if you're, you're getting going on, on, on Nimbix, you know, ho hopefully that the hardware will be at Nimbix in the future, but, but for sure there is a, there's a whole roadmap uh, of, of, uh, of hardware uh, coming. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is this uh, 3.1 uh, open copy. So, so this is intended for memory. So as you know, um, in power we've had the, the processors that, that, in, that were used mostly for the open power systems that have direct DDR attached, and we had the buffered memory, 
um, also with with Power Eight uh, and the Power Eight and the Power Nine scale up systems that had a <laughs> IBM proprietary buffer that was used uh, to create uh, even higher bandwidth to uh, to <coughs> uh, that are proprietary buffers and proprietary dims. Uh, what we uh, are trying to do uh, through uh, through OpenCapital.org um, and working with ZEDEC is to get a buffer chip that is actually not proprietary uh, that that would serve the same purpose. But it is extra interesting now compared to the past because there's all these new types of memory, you know, like 3D cross point or phase change memory or what have you. And if the, the advantage of having a buffer there is that you don't have to just run the DDR protocol directly, right? That runs on the other side of the buffer. So you get flexibility in terms of what of different memory types maybe that you want to hold into your system. So, so this, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is final, this is some suggested uh, uh, formats for these DIMMs that would indeed you know, have something that looks like a, a, a by 8 uh, copy on one side and, and, and could have uh, uh, different uh, devices on them. And again, this is from a talk uh, by Rambus at that uh, Open Power Summit. Uh, this is a development board. Uh, again, comes in with an, an open copy link. Uh, and by the way, if you if you're doing Gen Z kind of stuff, you can use that same uh, board and with an FPGA. And you can plug in uh, devices and, and, and you know try try you know get get ready for uh, for for this uh, copy 3.1 future and, and different types of memory in, in, in future uh, power systems. All right. So, um, yeah. so the, the main point of this, I, I wanted to show a few things, but the main point of this is, of course, you know, hope that, uh, that, that some of you will, uh, will get involved and play with this stuff <laughs> and help, help move the ball forward. So that was it. <laughs>